What is up, Koranix? Welcome back to my top 10 series. In this one, we're going to be discussing the top 10 most disappointing DLC cars in GTA Online, in my personal opinion. Basically, cars that were added and were disappointing based on a lack of customization, features, handling flags, details, interior, exterior, etc. And to clarify, this will not include aircraft, motorcycles, weaponized vehicles, etc. But anyways, starting off with number 10, we have the Benefactor Strider. For years, the community was wanting a performance wagon, whether that be based on a Mercedes, BMW, or Audi-inspired performance wagon. And in 2017, Rockstar finally added a Mercedes-based wagon, but instead of giving us one based on a nice sporty performance wagon, we got some lifted monstrosity with these weird large fender flares that honestly no one really wanted. And instead of putting it in the off-roads class so it would at least have some use, Rockstar decided to put it in a sports car class for some reason. Just very strange. I mean, imagine how great it would have been to have it as a normal wagon. People in the modding community actually did that themselves, and look at how amazing this looks. That's what we could have had, but sadly we didn't. Now granted, the Strider is based on a real-life off-road wagon called the Mercedes E-Class All-Terrain 4x4 Squared, which I guess is sort of cool, but no one really wanted that over a normal E-Class wagon. They should have given us the regular one first and then given us this thing afterwards. Over time, it was a forgotten vehicle since it didn't really have much use in a sports class, its controversial styling. And till this day, we still don't have a nice performance German wagon in game other than the recently added Reinhardt. So real shame there, it just is what it is. Hopefully we get a Mercedes inspired performance wagon in the future that's normal, but honestly at this point I highly doubt it. Continuing to number 9, we have the Hijack Rustin. So when I first saw this car, I was very excited to see how potentially great the handling was going to be on it, especially since it's clearly based on a track-focused car. I assumed this thing was probably going to have some of the best handling in the game, almost supercar-like, but after upgrading it and driving it, it's quite clear Rockstar just copied over traditional sports car handling stats, but with more understeer, which resulted in a car that didn't really handle all that well, especially again based on the way it looks. For reference, this thing is slower around a track than an OG Sultan off the street, and it's around the same pace around a track as the OG Buffalo S. I mean, it really makes no sense, and it was extremely disappointing at the time that we received a track car without proper track performance. And to add on here, I also want to mention the Locust, which has pretty similar styling, but the reason I put the Rust in instead is because it has significantly worse performance, but still, the Locust still isn't that great either. Moving on to number 8, we have the Hot Ring Saber. For years, the community was wanting a NASCAR stock car in GT Online, and in 2018, Rockstar finally added one. I remember getting really excited to drive this car at high speed with friends, but after most of the community started driving this thing around for the first time, there was a lot of disappointment. Firstly, it had the dreaded slow handling flags that was introduced with the update it released in, and the top speed wasn't all that high in comparison to other cars in the game, in part due to those handling flags. The customization was pretty much just liveries and that was pretty much it. It was a pretty disappointing car at the time, I think Rockstar could have definitely done a lot better. Next up, on to number 7, we have the Enos Jubilee. So ever since the Rolls-Royce Cullinan was introduced, a lot of players were wanting Rockstar to add one in-game as a nice luxury SUV with a nice interior and all that, and in 2021, with the contract update, we finally received it. But Rockstar decided to reuse a 2013 interior for a brand new Rolls-Royce-based luxury SUV. I mean, I could understand them doing this back in 2015, 2016, but in 2021, it was just something that was very disappointing for a Rolls-Royce based vehicle. And yes, the Imani Tech stuff that it offers is cool, but that interior just really ruins that vehicle for me and makes it look like an OG or older DLC car and not a DLC car from 2021. Continuing to number 6, we have the Dubachi Champion. 
Honestly, I think this is a great looking car with some respectable customization, so why is it on this list? Well, Rockstar decided to place this one in the supercar class, and when I saw that, honestly I got pretty excited to see what the performance of this car was going to be like, since it wasn't just a random new sports car, it was a car that Rockstar put in the supercar class. I figured there was a reason for this, it has to have really good performance for them to do that. But sadly, this car is one of the slowest cars in the supercar class. And for reference, it's slower around a track than the OG Vaca. Why? <laughs> and let's say for argument's sake that it was in the sports class, it's still slower around a track than the OG Feltzer. I mean, this thing is just really slow and underwhelming, which is a real shame. This car had a lot of potential to at least be a mid-tier performing supercar, but it's barely even a mid-tier performing sports car. And a lot of players were really disappointed when they saw how slow it was after spending over $3 million on it. Moving on to number 5, we have the iWagon. Or as I like to call it, the slow wagon. Or as my friends call it, the iSlow. <laughs> when I saw Rockstar was adding an electric SUV, I actually got pretty excited as I thought it was going to give us a lot more variety at the top of the SUVs class for racing, especially with a price of over $1.7 million. So essentially a $2 million SUV with upgrades, but sadly, fully maxed out, this thing has a top speed of only 94 miles per hour. I mean, that barely keeps up with traffic on the highway. It's just <laughs> an absolute joke. Plus, when you open the trunk, it actually goes through the rear spoiler doesn't go with the rear spoiler it just just goes through it on a two million dollar vehicle really rockstar plus it has the 2013 reused interior it's just too many mediocre things on a two million dollar car very disappointing vehicle next up on to number four we have the slam truck oh boy i remember when this thing was released in 2021 it was extremely controversial people were complaining about how useless it was and what was the point in adding a tow truck that can't actually tow cars properly, especially since the tow truck from story mode is blacklisted in online. So a large portion of the community was excited for this thing to be added, but sadly it just can't tow properly. And Rockstar even tried advertising it a certain way as like a portable ramp car with this advertisement instead of an actual tow truck, just really weird. Now granted, you can drive cars on there for like photo shoots and stuff, but obviously if you start driving the slam truck, the car is just going to slide right off. A feature to maybe hit right on the D-pad to lock a car in place when you drive it up there would have been amazing, but sadly that wasn't the case. Continuing to number 3, we have the Entity MT. So after the mess of handling flags Rockstar was experimenting with back on cars in 2018, for 2019 and beyond, they pretty much stopped messing around with them on cars, which the community was very happy about. However, they never went back and fixed those cars they were experimenting with, they just left them like that, which left cars like the Entity XXR ruined with those annoying handling flags. For those of you who don't know, the handling flags were so bad that the OG Entity XF actually had better track performance than the newer XXR. So. Yeah, the community was hoping for a newer Koenigsegg based car that was normal and newer without those handling flags with better detail, exhaust note, etc. Well, last year with the Drug Wars update, Rockstar finally decided to add a newer Koenigsegg based car on the Yesco, which the community got really excited about. But upon release, the community noticed quite quickly that it was basically just a reskinned Entity XXR. So much so, that they accidentally copied over the handling flag coating from the XXR and forgot to remove it. Plus it had normal opening doors, a similar exhaust note to the XXR, and a reused engine model from 2013. After waiting over 4 years for a new Koenigsegg, this is what Rockstar gave us, really. It was extremely, extremely disappointing. Now granted, it does offer the HSW upgrades if you're on current gen consoles, but the car still has those annoying handling flags and drives terrible, it just does it at a higher rate of speed. And it really is a shame since the exterior styling and customization was actually very good, but it was just 
all these little things that ruined it and they could have easily changed that before releasing it they could have given it unique doors a unique engine model and just deleted that handling flat coating and it would have been a very solid car moving on to number two we have the surfer custom so for years the community was wanting a benny's custom variant of the og surfer because obviously the possibilities are endless with the insane custom creations people have made in real life with those vw buses and last year with the drug wars update rockstar finally decided to give us a surfer custom except it wasn't a benny's vehicle it was a normal vehicle that was called surfer custom but i still had my hopes up and once I got to the customization, I was pretty disappointed. Now it does have decent visual customization, I'll give it that, but the biggest letdown was the fact that it had no interior customization options, which was a major missed opportunity from Rockstar. I mean, if we look at the crazy interior customization from Benny's vehicles, even the Yuga Classic 4x4 for example, they could have easily reused most of those assets and made something super creative and unique with the Surfer Custom, but sadly they didn't. And lastly, on to number one, the most disappointing DLC update vehicle in my personal opinion, we have the Journey 2. So this vehicle was added with the Drug Wars DLC as well again, only about a year ago. And the idea of Rockstar taking the original Journey and giving us a customizable variant of it was very exciting, especially since it was a personal vehicle this time instead of a Pegasus vehicle like the original one. But sadly, Rockstar decided to just add some livery options, the traditional internal mods and wheels, and call it a day. I mean, really Rockstar? You guys released this in 2022, not 2013. <laughs> I don't understand why they were so lazy with this thing. And they didn't even bother to give it the basic spawn variant options like the open or closed curtains or the rear ladder. So if you wanted those specific variants, let's say you wanted a closed curtain journey too, you actually have to buy this $600,000 vehicle over and over again until the variant you want appears in your garage very annoying and honestly that's just kind of messed up plus they took all the rust off the original but for some reason they left the rust on the stock wheels clearly a rushed vehicle and it's a real shame that they added it in game the way they did instead of putting the proper effort and time into it but anyways guys there you have it those are the top 10 most disappointing cars in gt online in my personal opinion based on feedback from the community over the years and my personal experience customizing cars all these years as well obviously opinions vary but i think most of these are justifiably disappointing based on the facts i stated for each one definitely let me know down below in the comments what vehicles you find disappointing and what other top 10 videos you guys like to see me do next thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one